Hey friends, it's Tracy. I do love all of the colors for the month of October. And in this video, I put together a few last minute Halloween DIYs just to decorate around my home to enhance and spread the light. Guys, my name is Tracy. I love to share crafty ideas with a bit of rustic country charm. I am so glad that you're here. And without further ado, let's get started. The wood jack-o'-lantern is from Dollar Tree as well as this black uh, charger plate. I'm going to be making this design. Uh, also using some scrapbook paper from Miss Kate Designs. I will have a link to that in the description box below. I used uh, the yellow out of the Give Thanks collection and the orange polka dot out of the Fall Days. All right, so then uh, later on I should have... <laughs> Uh, heated up the extra wood pieces get it off but no I had to do it the hard way so what I did is I just took my uh, I was trying to form it burnish it a little I took my sanding uh, sanding tool and just kind of formed it around just to cut it out well then when I got to the mouth yeah that didn't work too good so I end up uh, taking my heat tool and getting off those extra pieces so that I can, uh, you know, cut those out where they will be correct. And so I should have done this at the very beginning. It takes a little bit of extra time, but you know, sometimes I'm a glutton for punishment and I'm like, why didn't you do that in the first place? <laughs> but if you can get those extra pieces off of the uh, face, that is very helpful. I'm going to be using the Mod Podge heat transfer method on each of these pieces. I did the pumpkin as well as the eyes, nose, and the mouth. Uh, if you're not familiar with the Mod Podge heat transfer method, you put a thin layer of Mod Podge on your surface, let that dry completely. I used my heat tool to help speed up the process a bit. And when that's dry, then I have my Cricut Mini uh, that is just a small iron that I have on hand. Uh, any iron would work, but this is just something that I had on hand. I'm using a piece of parchment paper as a barrier just to uh, help me with attaching the paper. And so then I do each one of those, the pumpkin, then the yellow for the eyes, nose, and mouth. And my Cricut Mini Press just works really good for that. But as I mentioned, any iron would work. And then that adheres the paper to the wood pieces. For the stem of the pumpkin, I just pulled out some turquoise or teal paper and cut that down for the stem. Now I'm adding some vintage photo distress ink to the edges of each of the pieces for giving it the color that I like. Then I take my fine Sharpie marker and add some doodling around each of the pieces uh, that it just gives it the whimsical cute rustic touch that I like and then uh, to attach the pieces to the pumpkin I'm just using E6000 as well as hot glue I just put some of that on there and attach each of the pieces just gluing them down To attach the pumpkin to the uh, charger plate, I'm using some Silly Winks in black. Now this is just fun foam I get at uh, Hobby Lobby. I like to get the thicker one, which is the 5M. And so I just cut some of it down to attach to the back. Well, once I put it on the platter, I realized that I needed to kind of double stack it and make it a bit thicker so that it would fit in the hole of the charger plate. So to get it, uh, roughen it up a bit, I just took my little sanding tool and kind of roughened it up so that the glue would stick uh, to the back of the platter. So I just used some E6000 and hot glue to attach my cute pumpkin to the black platter. 
for a trim around the back of my uh, platter charger here. I have some black and white ruffle trim that I picked up at Hobby Lobby and to adhere it or attach it to the back of the platter what I'm doing is I took my little sanding sponge and I kind of rubbed off a bit of that black color uh, because I needed this pla platter is plastic and it has like a clear coating on it so I want it to take a bit of that off so that when I adhere my trim that it will stick to the back of the platter so I'm using the glue that I'm using is Beacon uh, Fabri-Tac glue it's the three-in-one advanced craft glue and I uh, picked that up at Hobby Lobby in the sewing section not quite sure exactly where else you can get that from but other places have Fabri-Tac glue and so I just glue that around the edge or the rim of the platter all the way around and I just did uh, dots of hot glue as well so that I could get like the instant hold. For a hanger on the back of my platter, I wanted, I wish I would have had some thick black rope. I don't even know if they make it that thick, but what I did is I have some of this rope that I got from the Dollar Tree, pulled out my black chalk paint, and I just painted me some black rope. And I'm um, going to hear that to the back of my platter. Now I took off a bit of that plastic as well, because when I glue it, I want it to be able to stick to that. I'm just using my Beacon 3-in-1 glue for that as well some hot glue and I am going to uh, stabilize it a little bit better hold give it a little bit better hold with some duct tape and all I had on hand was this red and black duct tape but that's okay because I pulled out some felt and covered that up so you, it, you just don't never really know what's underneath there so I just cut off a piece of the felt glue that on there and everything is really nice and secure on the back of the platter for the junk bow or messy bow, this is what I used, uh, some muslin fabric, some homespun fabric that I got from jubileefabric.com, as well as some of this cheesecloth that I got from Hobby Lobby in the sewing section. I cut off some pieces of that. I wanted it to be a little bit more tattered, a little bit more vintagey looking. So I pulled out my shimmering uh, spray and just gave it some spritzes of that. Let that dry and that just gives a little bit of uh, distressing to it. So I had this black one and a half inch ribbon on hand. I just made a simple two loop bow and then that is going to be what I'm going to add to my fabric bow. I also pulled out some raffia and made a bow with that because of course any whimsical country project for me has to have some raffia. So I just put all of my strips of fabric together kind of you know doing it in an X pattern just no rhyme or reason. I kind of start with the thicker ones at the bottom, just layering them as I go along until I get the bow, the, the, the way that I like it to look for my whimsical country project. I pulled out one of the Manila tags that I had on hand and then I have a couple of background stamps. These came from Hobby Lobby. I like to stamp on an old mouse pad. I feel that it gives me a better impression. So then for the Hey Boo letters, I pulled out my IOD letterpress stamps. I'm using several of those from that collection. I try to center my letters the best that I can and I found this to be helpful if if I start figure out the center and then I work from there and so I just stamp out hey boo and then I'm going to give a little bit of distressing with my vintage 
uh, photo distress ink and all the cute whimsical touches that I love for my project. Now to give a little bit of shimmer, uh, what I have is I have some glitter and uh, I have some adhesive spray so I went ahead and did that. Now I know that the, a lot of friends don't like glitter but I don't mind it if I can put the glitter on there. I love the sparkle. I don't want it to fall off uh, and so the adhesive spray you know and then sprinkling the glitter on there really helps. These planters are something that I found at Dollar General. They were part of their 50% uh, off lawn and garden and they're plastic, but I loved the way that they looked. There was some orange or rust colored ones as well as some silver stone looking ones. All right, so then now what I'm doing is measuring how wide I want the mouth for my jack-o'-lantern. So then I go to Cricut and I just, uh, I'm in design space here I look up some cute jack-o'-lantern faces there are just so many to choose from if you do not have a Cricut you can look on Pinterest or Google uh, some sort of jack-o'-lantern faces or draw them out yourself because you know just by making triangles and circles they're pretty easy to do so then I find the ones that I want and uh, insert them here on my mat or my canvas and then I'm going to resize them so that they're five inches wide that is uh, how big I want the mouth to be so then I have uh, six different styles of faces that I'm going to be cutting out and so then I pulled out my Cricut Joy just little uh, desk machine here and then I have some smart vinyl and I cut all six of those out all at one time Weeding vinyl is one of the least favorite things to do, but working with the smart vinyl, I find it a bit thicker and a little bit easier for me to weed. So I just uh, weed that out that it, weeding is just, uh, just taking out the excess. So then I'm left with a cute little face. I just love this so much. So I'm just using some transfer tape to transfer my face onto that so that I can put it onto my container to make the cute little jack-o'-lantern. So I do that for each one of the jack-o'-lanterns at the store that I was at, the Dollar, uh, the, uh, yeah, Dollar General. Uh, they only had four of the rust colored ones and then uh, the four of the silver colored ones and then only two of those rust colored ones I wish they would have had more uh, I need to check another store but these just turned out so cute so the transfer tape just helps to transfer the vinyl onto the small uh, little planter here so then I have a cute little jack-o'-lantern and just by doing different faces just has a different uh, you know ideas now I just shared this here. You could do it upside down. Uh, you know, it put where the planter would be upside down or right side up rather. I guess I should say it like that, right side up you know so that's just different options okay so then since I'm going to be doing those upside down so that I could put a stem on there I didn't want anything permanent so I'm cutting out some uh, black and white uh, check circles now this paper came from Hobby Lobby so I just drew out the top of the planter then cutting out circles and that is going to be what I'm going to adhere to that top of the planter right there so just to distress it a bit I have some silver ink that I had on hand I got that probably at Hobby Lobby I'm also going to be adding some black distress ink just to tie it all in together 
So I added some black Sharpie marker as well as uh, I tattered the edges of the paper just with my box blade just to roughen it up a bit. I found this um, Crocodile Multi Punch over at Joann's and I had not seen it before. It is a Crocodile where it has different sizes of hole punchers uh, or hole punches. I will have a link to it in the description box. I did find it on uh, on Amazon if you would like to check it out. I love, I'm a tool junkie. So what I did is I just had some uh, white vinyl and just use that hole punch to punch out some small holes so that I could add it for a couple of my faces just to change it up a bit and add some faces to uh, three of the jack-o'-lanterns. Three I left just with black uh, vinyl, but the other three I did add some uh, white highlights to it. And what I'm doing here is just cutting strips just to add just some highlights to like where the teeth would be. This is totally optional. I just wanted to give you just different ideas and for different inspiration. All right, so for the stems of the pumpkins, I'm using some of these wood stems that I got in a pack over at Dollar Tree, and I have some black paint, just giving it a rough coat, not doing it being too precise. Uh, I was okay if a bit of the wood showed through. I'm just gonna paint that. Then I'm gonna give it some shimmer with my silver uh, glitter dust I got off of Amazon. I will have a link to that also in the description box if you would like to check that out so I just gave it a little spray of that just to give it a little shimmer and so then this is how I'm going to decorate or how I decorated the tops of my uh, jack-o'-lanterns and uh, but first what I want to do is attach the paper and I'm going to do that since it's temporary like if I want to take this apart I just use some glue dots just put that on the back of the paper, then glue that. This is all, these small buckets or planters are plastic, so they it attached fine. And then I did hot glue the stem to the paper, and then that just stays on there really nice. All right, so then for the bow, what I have some of this web looking uh, ribbon that I got from Hobby Lobby, and then I have some of this angel vine, uh, kind of grapevine that I've had on hand for several years. I had found mine at Hobby Lobby. I will have a link to some that I did find uh, on Amazon. It is like grapevine, but it's a very, it's very delicate and it does break easy but it looks very wispy <laughs> very whimsical very rustic so then I have just some brown wire that I found at Michael's in the Christmas section and then I'm just going to be adding two strips of that and then using my uh, curling tools just to curl uh, make some curling wires around just to look of like pumpkin tendrils and that kind of thing. I know that the camera really doesn't pick all that up too good, but in person it all ties in very well. Now you don't need these curling tools. This is just something that I have on hand. You could also use a dowel, a pencil, or you know, just twirl them around your fingers. And then I just glued it there to the top of each of the jack-o'-lanterns, and then they both just turned out so adorable. I just love these so much, and I'm so happy. I do like to have a little bit of this decoration jack-o'-lanterns cute stuff nothing scary nothing of that sort uh, but just cuteness just to spread the light This Be The Light sign is using one of the clearance signs that I picked up over at Hobby Lobby and uh, measured out the insert of the sign. So I knew how big I needed my paper and it came out to be about nine and a half by nine and a half. So I have some of this black and white uh, check paper as well as a bit uh, left over from the orange and white polka dot from a previous project. So I cut strips of that 
then what I'm going to do is I wanted to share this tip or hack with you. This is what I found by doing this project. I put adhered all of the paper on with a layer of Mod Podge to secure that down. Then once all that was dry, then I went back over it and gave it a coat of the Mod Podge. Now what I went uh, for the be the light uh, decal I just went to my Cricut design space pulled out uh, an image that I wanted cut it out on my Cricut and then I weeded uh, the vinyl and then um, I wanted the rays of the sun or the light to be uh, a yellow so I pulled out some of that paper it's kind of supposed to be like a cricket paper that's from the dollar tree hmm not impressed this is one of the first times that i used it in my cricket and so it really did it anyway so i had to finagle it kind of like really try to get this on here and so i wish i would have just did something different but that's okay it's all the learning process but the biggest tip that i want to say is if you put a layer of mod podge over your paper and you put a cricut decal on there i did not have any ripping of my paper i have tried to use final on scrapbook paper before and what and it would and when i would use my uh, transfer tape it would always tear it and so i didn't have any kind of pulling up or anything of my scrapbook paper once i put my decal down to bring out more of the letters i just pulled out my gold paint marker now this is from a pack uh, acrylic paint markers i have them listed in my amazon shop if that is something that you're interested in i just went around each of the letters now the uh the actual b the words were two then for me to do that so I just went around the light as well as the cross and then uh, to enhance it a bit more I have uh, some gold vase filler I just cut those in half their styrofoam balls and I just glued those to the corner of each of the sign just to bring them out a bit more now I have some black rickrack that I had on hand and I think I got that at Hobby Lobby and I just added that there to the sign and I just love the way all of the this came together and uh, but I just wanted to share the tips of the Mod Podge on scrapbook paper if you want to use a uh, vinyl decal if you're going to be using transfer tape. Mm -hmm. 